Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Jake. I'm a teenager. I'm smack bang in the middle of being a kid and a teenager. Here's the thing. I really like mountain biking, but it's kind of hard when you're my age. I want to ride on bigger wheels because I'll know it make my ride faster. But the problem, the bigger bikes are well too big. I've been riding my Norco Fluid FS1 for a year now. It's a 24-inch full suspension bike and it's really cool. It let me try out some new trails and stuff and I was able to progress my riding a lot. But the harder the trail gets, the more I wish I had bigger wheels. But still, I'm too small for a full-size 27.5. That's when the folks at Bikes Online gave me an idea. Why don't you try a full suspension Marin Rivestone 26? And of course, I said yes. I'm going to show you all about it. Let's dive right in. Now, let's get a close-up of the Marin Ripson Junior. Like all of Marin's bikes, it's made to party. It's a blast, just like it's big rather than the full-size Marin, but with smaller wheels. Bikes Online sent me the Rifson Junior in Express, and it was arrived and built within the same week. Just in time for the shuttle day, just for kids at the UVN for the weekend. It was the perfect place to try out this bike. This place has some flowy jump trails, but it has lots of rocky technical sections, which was a real trouble with my 24 inch. It was literally the first time I rode that bike and it was pouring wet that day. But that of course didn't deter us from riding double the black diamonds. Okay, Cressies, I think this is our fifth lap. So I've really warmed up and it's foggy and raining. My Norco Fluid FS1 has a better spec overall. For example, there's a better fork and truck, but the 26 inch wheels make a big difference and will it make up for it? Let's find out. I've been riding this bike for two months now and I've rode it basically everywhere from fast and flowy sections, technical sections and really steep and roll. Okay, let's take a look at the Marin Rifson Junior. The frame is Marin's 3 Series alloy with a rad color scheme that consists of black that fades into a nice blue with a yellow overlay. It looks really sick. Marin stepped up their game and all of their 2023 lineup have got really good looking colorways across the entire range. This is the 2023 model and it has specific changes to the frame's geometry. The head angle is 65.5 degrees, which is pretty slack for a trail bike, but not super slack that the front end is wandering on the climbs. At the middle end, the seat tube is, angle is steep at 76 degrees, making it a more efficient platform to climb on. Marin has bought the trend from modern mountain bikes so younger riders can enjoy the long, low and slack geometry. The extended reach and lower position of the bottom bracket comes really into their own when you're bombing down quick and smooth trails. Take this one for instance. At Cressy's Descent, there is a high speed section packed with braking loops. Demanding sharp changes in direction and constant cornering. With this setup, handling at high speeds becomes a breeze. The shorter chainstay on this bike really cranks up the fun factor. It helps you effortlessly pop up the front wheel for jumps on the trail. And it lets you whip up the back around when you're tackling those tight bends. However, because of this change, you can't put a 27.5 rear wheel when you could do it on the previous frame. But that's a lot to ask for a 24-26 convertible frame. If you're someone younger, then you can start off with a 24 inch wheel and then you can get some 26 inch wheels later on so the bike grows with you. And then you can put the 24 inch wheels back if you have a younger sibling so they can use it. 
what's the big deal of this so-called slack head angle? Well, this basically means that the fork isn't sticking straight up, but rather it's leaning a bit more forward. Well, why does this matter? When you're riding down super steep trails, this gives you a bit more wiggle room to maneuver without flipping over the handlebars whenever you front wheel hits a bump. This new generation does have internal cable routing for a sleeker look, but it doesn't come with a dropper post, which is quite disappointing for this price point. The rear suspension is using the multi-track suspension design, which is used by Megarin all across its full suspension range. It does a good job of handling bump, and since it's a vertical configuration, it leaves room for a bottle cage. Even for such a small bike, one thing that I hoped is Marin decided to use a more uncommon rear shock configuration, because this one has an older metric, 7.5 by 2, which is quite hard to find if you want to upgrade your rear shock like me. The frame uses SRAM's UDH, or Universal Derailleur Hanger Standard, which is good if you bash your derailleur badly. Chances are you can get a UDH in most bike shops and continue riding. Plus, you can upgrade to SRAM's Eagles transmission if you choose to, but that's only if you upgraded to a boost wheel set. Because stock wheel is not boost, and the custom UDH standard hanger that uses a QR skewer rather than a through axle. Tabby lens, double black run on a new bike. Talking about drivetrain, it uses the Shimano Duo 11 speed, which is quite common and is paired to a Sunrace 11 to 51 tooth and a KMC chain. I find that it has the perfect range for this 26 inch version, enough to climb steep hills and sprint on fast and flowy trails. While fairly basic, it does do the job for a modern one by drivetrain. Disappointing though, the 26 inch comes with a 170mm crank set, which is way too long. That same equipped with the full size rift zone, and it's really hard to source replacement shorter crank sets. I really wish that Marin equipped it with a 152 crank just like the 24 inch version. The 170 mil crank set is quite awkward and it looks like the bike is too big for me. You tend to stick with the harder gears because pedaling on higher cadence with short legs is pretty difficult and you are more prone to pedal strike on the rocky sections that you will have to ratchet to climb over rocks. And if you've noticed, I've changed the cranks and chain ring on this one. <laughs> Let's talk suspension. The bumps and impacts are taken by X Fusion, and it has 130 millimeters of suspension front and rear. The fork is the 26 inch Velvet RL Air fork, which is excellent to dial in the suspension based on your weight, riding style and terrain. This is a non-boost fork, meaning it's slightly narrower than some modern fork designs. Most riders won't really feel the difference, but keep that in mind if you're planning to change the wheel set in the future. It took a bit of time for the fork to wear in the seals. So if you have this bike, best to take it for chill rides first. But once you've broken it in and you've set the side perfectly for your weight, you can spend more time tinkering with the rebound dial and it's based on the trail you're going. There's also a lockout switch, so you can make it easier for you to climb. In theory, that is. I find it, it doesn't really help that much when you tend to forget it on the way down, so I just don't touch it. At the back, we've got the Xfusion O2 Pro R Air Shock. Equipped with basic rebound adjustment, I've got to say, I'm digging how the sticker or the suspension part is matching the bike's overall look. The tricky part is finding that sweet swap between sag and small bump sensitivity over rocks, all the while maintaining support to prevent bottoming up. I'm currently on the hunt to find some volume spacers for this shock, and if you know if there's volume spacers out there for this shock, let me know in the comments because I really need them. All 
in all, I'm genuinely impressed on how the suspension is. It may not be the quickest, but it's it does the job good. And there has been no feature when the suspension has held me back. Bikes are equipped with tubeless ready double wall alloy rims from Marin, which are unfortunately paired with some not good hubs. These hubs are virtually silent and have come with a significant dead zone, which can be a real challenge when you're trying to ratchet your way up on those technical inclines. It's not an issue on most trails, but when it is come to those tech tackling with those rocky and punchy climbs over beaches, this could be the difference between going over it or having to bail. The wheels come equipped with the V-tire flow snaps, which are known for their ample grip. They held up well even during a soaking wet ride, providing traction <laughs> over slick rocks. But there was one incident where I slept over a boulder, but that was more due to my skills than the tire itself. I still approach wet routes with caution though, but that's something any rider would do, no matter how good the tires are. The flow snaps are a good trail tire choice. Not too aggressive, yet they maintain a good balance of rolling resistance. But there's a catch. Despite the rims being tubeless ready, the tires themselves are not. So going tubeless isn't an option, which is a real shame. Why Marin? This bike features a hydraulic disc brake set, the Shimano Altus MT200s, which provides ample stopping power for light riders. Although these are two piston calipers and this is a budget brake set, they clock the, the tires pretty easily. I found that the levers were a bit more challenging to modulate compared to other brakes that I've used previously. There's also 180mm rotors on the front where are most of the braking is, and 160 on the back, and it does the job. Okay, it's this one. the bike, Marin has sprinkled a bunch of features that might add to its appeal. You'll notice the Marin logo adding a touch of style to the stem and handlebar. Small but thoughtful details like the made for fine engraving on the pivot bolts bring an extra dash of cool to the bike. It comes with some decent Marin non-lock-on grips, but I swapped them for some DMR death grips to match the bike's color, and it looks pretty sick. Interestingly, the bike is advertised with not coming with pedals, but I did find some entry-level plastic pedals in the box to avoid disappointment. There is also a proper chainstay guard, which is a good feature that Marin added, and I'm really happy about that. Because it's proper, yeah! proper, like proper, proper, proper. I also weigh this bike and it comes at 15 kilos, which is a bit on the heavier side, but I wouldn't blame Marin for it. This bike retails for 2799 AUD or 1914 USD, which is quite reasonable for a kid's 24 or 26 inch trail bike. Comparing this to the likes of the Polygon D24X, the D24X has more value for your money. It already comes with the dropper post and the D24X has tubeless ready tires, but everything else is pretty similar, such as the fork and chalk. Although the Marin does have a longer reach. In summary, I like the sleek paint job, I like the uh, flow snaps, and I do like the modern trail geometry. But I don't really like the uncommon shock spec 
the lack of dropper post and the 170 mil cranks on the 26 version. And by the way, this is my new bike. And we'll see more of this bike. Overall, I think this bike is perfect for kids that want the benefits of having the bigger wheels, but the bike still fits them perfectly. I reckon you could ride this bike for about one to two years, and then you could move up to a full size 27.5. If you like our videos, you can like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And if you want to see other review videos right here, you can. Until the next video, you should hard rate it. See y'all!